one of the world's oldest works of literature, the Gilgamesh tablets was looted from Iraq during the Gulf War. The world of archaeology has been rocked by an incredible discovery. The intact tomb of the legendary Nephilim king, Gilgamesh, has been unearthed. This long-lost figure from ancient mythology has captivated people's imaginations for centuries, but many believed him to be just a fictional character. Now, with the discovery of his tomb, we may have concrete evidence of his existence. Are you ready to discover the secrets of the Nephilim King and uncover the mysteries of ancient history? Let's get started. In recent years, the world has been astounded by the discovery of Gilgamesh, an ancient Mesopotamian city that was uncovered when the Euphrates River completely dried up. Thanks to this discovery, we now know where the city is. This remarkable discovery at an archaeological site has not only shed new light on one of the most fascinating and mysterious characters in all of human history, but has also sparked intense interest and debate among scholars and historians. The story of Gilgamesh, the legendary king of Uruk, has captivated audiences throughout the world for thousands of years. His legacy has endured through the ages because of the ancient writings and epic poems that have chronicled his exploits. However, for hundreds of years, nobody knew where exactly his grave was and most people assumed it had been destroyed by time. When weather patterns changed and other environmental factors came into play, the Euphrates River, which had flowed through the area continuously for a long time, suddenly stopped flowing through the area. Archaeologists investigating the riverside after the floodwater subsided discovered the remains of a massive structure that had been buried there. As excavation progressed, it became clear that this was the long-lost grave of Gilgamesh. Let's reminisce about Gilgamesh's past. The goddess Ninsun, also known as Ninsumun, the Holy Mother and Great Queen, and the priest king Lugulbanda are said to have been Gilgamesh's fabled parents. According to the Sumerian king list, Gilgamesh ruled for 126 years. Someone with such incredible longevity and power must have been a demigod. Almost everyone agrees that Gilgamesh was the fifth king of Uruk, ruling around the 26th century BCE. It is thought that his deeds prompted legends about his heavenly character, which later came to compose the narrative that would become the foundation for what would become known as the Epic of Gilgamesh. Some of Mesopotamia's later kings even claimed lineal descent from him. Shulgi of Ur, widely considered the greatest ruler of the Ur III period from 2047 to 1750 BCE in Mesopotamia, allegedly claimed Lugalbanda and Ninsun as his parents and Gilgamesh as his brother to raise his popularity among his subjects. Researchers have suggested many meanings for his name, including the kinsman as a hero and the old man as a young man. In poetry from ancient Sumer, in the popular book The Descent of Inanna, he is presented to modern readers as a god who died and was reincarnated, the legendary king of Uruk and the consort of Inanna or Ishtar. The rejection of Inanna Ishtar is only part of Gilgamesh's pain. He also misses his friend Dumuzi, whom he seduced and then punished by sending to the underworld for half a year. Among the ruins of Ashur Banipal's library in Nineveh, archaeologist Austin Henry Layard found the Akkadian translation of the poem in 1849. European governments and institutions began supporting expeditions to Mesopotamia in the middle of the 19th century to find physical evidence of events described in the Bible. One such journey was Layard's excursion. The Bible was thought to be the oldest literature in the world, but scholars later found that it borrowed substantially from older Sumerian mythology. The Epic of Gilgamesh did the same effect as it was based on tales that had been passed down orally for hundreds of years, possibly thousands. It was thought that the Babylonian writer Sheen Laki Unini was the first author acknowledged by name in the world until the works of the poet priestess Ehuduanna, daughter of Sargon of Akkad, were uncovered. Sheen Laki Unini probably had access to a wide range of Sumerian sources, as Gilgamesh had been a famous hero for decades before the epic was written. In the Sumerian tale of Inanna and the Hulupu tree, from about 2900 BCE, Gilgamesh plays the role of a devoted brother to Inanna. Inanna, the Sumerian goddess of love and war, plants a tree in her garden so that she might make furniture from its trunk and limbs. However, a serpent at the tree's base, a female demon, and an Anzu bird in the tree's canopy soon make themselves at home there. Inanna has exhausted every option for eliminating pests without success. In the end, she turns to her brother, the sun god Utu Shamash, for help. 
Utu declines and instead summons Gilgamesh, who kills the snake with his mighty sword. Gilgamesh delivers the trunk to Inanna after the demon and the Unzu bird had escaped so that she can use it as the base for a bed and a chair. This is thought to be the first heroic poem to include Gilgamesh, and the fact that he rescues a powerful deity shows how highly he was thought of even in that early era. These narratives paint him as a hero, and the historical ruler was eventually worshipped as a god. One of Mesopotamia's most popular deities, Inanna, was often depicted with him as a sibling. Gilgamesh is shown on clay tablets as an underworld judge on par with the Greek mythological figures Radamanthus, Minos, and Isis. In the poem Gilgamesh, Inkudu and the Netherworld, which expands on earlier myths like Inanna and the Hulupu tree, Inkidu tells Gilgamesh about his experience in the afterlife after returning from Erish Kegel's Dark Realm to retrieve his friend's stolen belongings. If Enkidu is believed to have survived his journey to the Underworld and given this vision to Gilgamesh, then Gilgamesh may be the only living person to have seen what is beyond death. Cuneiform tablets were discovered by Layard in 1849, and George Smith translated and published them in 1876, becoming the definitive account of the narrative. All modern translations start with these 11 tablets, some add a 12th to provide more context for the relationships between Gilgamesh, Enkidu, and the Underworld. Due to his death in Tablet 7 of the traditional version, Enkidu's appearance in Tablet 12 as a servant and not Gilgamesh's companion is often excised. One common theory for why Tablet 12 is included is because it was written by Enkidu, a ghost who returned from the afterlife to tell Gilgamesh about his experiences. Gilgamesh's repeated claims to the gods in the poem that Enkidu has not died and is being wrongly held in the underworld contradict this interpretation. Most modern translators have made the prudent decision to treat Gilgamesh, Enkidu, and the Netherworld as independent works due to the typical form of the epic being attributed to the shin liki Unini period. Gilgamesh, who defied death in his quest for meaning, is often regarded as the literary world's first epic hero. We can all relate to Gilgamesh's grief and the questions raised by the death of his companion, since we too have experienced loss and search for meaning in the face of death. The legend of Gilgamesh and his deeds live on, even though he was not granted immortality. Scholars have long questioned whether early Sumerian or later Babylonian culture had a greater impact on the story as we know it today, given that the stories that constituted the Epic of Gilgamesh were recounted orally for decades before they were committed to writing. The best preserved version of the story is the Akkadian Babylonian Shin Laki Unini, which was based on the ancient Sumerian source material. Samuel Noah Kramer, a scholar, has some thoughts on the matter. The Epic of Gilgamesh incorporates several stories that have their roots in earlier Gilgamesh related Sumerian literature. Many aspects of events that have no clear Sumerian parallels can be traced back to the writings of the ancient Sumerians. While they may have been inspired by Sumerian works, no Babylonian poet ever directly copied one of their works. Little of the original Sumerian text survives because its meaning and form were drastically altered to reflect the people writing it. Unlike Sumerian literature, epics from Babylonia have a dramatic and ultimately tragic episodic drama of a restless, adventurous hero and his inevitable disillusionment. Whether or not cultural influences played a larger role in the piece's creation is irrelevant to its value, as is the case with any great work of literature. The Epic of Gilgamesh, like the Mahabharata, the Iliad, the Odyssey, the Shanama, and the Aeneid, does not belong to any particular civilization or period in terms of its depiction of the human condition. While it's true that literature often reveals much about its culture of origin, masterpieces like Gilgamesh transcend time and place. Since its first English translation in the 1870s, Gilgamesh has maintained its enduring popularity. For instance, a team of German archaeologists claimed to have found his grave in April 2003. Using cutting-edge technology, archaeologists have found guarded enclosures, specific buildings, and structures described in the Epic of Gilgamesh, including Gilgamesh's tomb, along and around the former riverbed of the Euphrates. The Euphrates River purportedly split in two after his death, burying him at its lowest point. Whether or not the historical king ever existed is irrelevant since his legend has grown and flourished in its own right. At the end of the story, when Gilgamesh is on his deathbed, the narrator says, It's true that the new moon, like heroes and sages, has its phases. The question, who has ever ruled with might and power like Gilgamesh, will be asked. The world would be as dark and hopeless without him as it is during the month of shadows. You were destined for greatness as a leader, Gilgamesh, but not eternal life. 
You don't need to feel sad and burdened since he has given you the power to bind and loosen, to be both the darkness and the light of mankind. The story of Gilgamesh's failure to make his wish come true is how he gains immortality. The epic itself has lived on in legend and served as a model for countless similar tales written in the decades after its inception. But as Mitchell elucidates, there's a lot more to it than that. Gilgamesh, like every great work of literature, has much to teach us about ourselves, which is why it has fascinated readers throughout the millennia. It has been translated into dozens of languages and has been read by millions of people who discovered it in its author's testimony, an emphatic reflection of their struggles with grief, fear of death, love, and the quest for understanding. Because of the various fundamentalisms that exist in the world today, each of which is certain that it is fighting for the right cause and is engaged in a crusade against those it considers to be its evil opponents, this saying is more relevant than ever. The hero of this epic is an anti-hero, a superman, or superpower perhaps, who mistakes pride for superiority. He must go on a torturous journey, a quest that provides knowledge by showing its futility, to prevent the disaster he brings upon himself by attacking the monster in advance. The epic possesses profound moral wisdom. Nuance and a refusal to take sides allow it to challenge our potentially damaging assumptions about what makes good and evil. The story of one person's resolve to accept a meaningless existence will live on to inspire friends, family, acquaintances, and even strangers long after that person has died away. What gives life meaning is this narrative. Gilgamesh, like every other individual who has ever lived, may be summed up in his struggle against what seems like meaninglessness, and his journey continues to inspire those who see how inherently human this struggle is and always has been. That's all for the video today, but we'll be right back with more soon, so don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, and thanks for watching.